Uh, so, Senator, uh, let, let, let's continue the conversation and, and talk about, uh, before we get to guns and the tragedy that happened in Atlanta, um, let's talk about mental health. What should Washington do? Because we're just not doing enough, are we? Well, it, it's something we're not, and it's something that I've seen up close, first of all, as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I've sat with families. I've talked to my own members and uh, who needed care. Uh, and so uh, uh, I just want to thank Norm for, for transforming his pain into power and speaking to this issue in the way that so many people do uh, need to. Now, last summer we did pass the first gun reform bill in 30 years. It had significant uh, provisions there for mental health. So we, we did pass a bill which is allowing us to do more than we've done in the past, but we've got a lot more that we need to do. A lot more to do. Let's talk about yesterday in Atlanta. Uh, unfortunately, it's just, it's, it's becoming the norm. It's not the, it's not the exception, it's the rule. Every day, it's either Texas or Georgia or upstate New York. It's insanity. Absolutely. We have had a mass shooting in this country uh, virtually every day this year. And uh, I'm afraid that we're becoming numb to it. I'm afraid that we are uh, uh, behaving as if this is normal. Mm -hmm. This is not normal right. to live in a country where no one is safe, no matter where they are. And so ironically, uh, Joe, by, yes, by the way, you say it's, it's not normal. It's also a choice. And, and I, choice. I, I, listen, I, I, we try not to, to just focus on one party, but on this issue, other than those, those Republicans that worked with you in the Senate, this is a choice of Republican legislators that they've made. And we've seen gun violence explode even since Sandy Hook. We have. And um, look, as divided as the country is, 87% uh, of Americans, uh, according to a Fox News poll, mm -hmm. uh, believe that we ought to have universal background checks. And not only have we not uh, seen a bill move forward on that issue, I can tell you that over the last few weeks, there was virtually no conversation even happening about this inside that building where I work. So ironically, mm -hmm. yesterday, uh, I was in Chuck Schumer's office uh, working with him to try to plan and talk about a way forward. How can we get something done on this issue? And literally an hour after that meeting where I'd been pushing my colleagues that we've got to respond. The conversation is happening out there. It has to happen in the Congress. Uh, I got word about this shooting in my own backyard, in my mm. own uh, hometown, and my own two precious children were on lockdown mm. uh, in their schools in response to this. Yeah. Just well, you know, the, you, you seem to be a man who has led people through providing them with hope. And the question here is the Congress has shut down. They don't seem to be doing anything on it. And most Americans will say, what are we going to do? Where do we go with this? How can we produce change? Do you have any idea? Is it going to take more than one of these a day? Or can this be made a central issue in the upcoming presidential campaign? Because as you say, 87% mm -hmm. of the American people support Should reasonable be. controls. Can this be central? Or are we just going to keep shrugging it off? We have to stand up. This is a defining moment. And um, as I said yesterday, uh, none of us is safe. It doesn't matter where we are, bars, restaurants, uh, in our houses of worship. Uh, the good news is that uh, there is uh, a growing consensus in the country that we have to do something. And yet there's a disconnect between what the people want and what they're getting out of their government. And so uh, uh, we have to stand up in this moment. And I, I have to say as a pastor that, that I think We've got to stand up uh, to this culture in which we have, in effect, turned guns into a kind of God. Mm -hmm. And we regularly sacrifice our children at the altar of this God. Uh, it cannot stand. Uh, I think that uh, there is a path to getting something done, and I'm going to keep working on it. Uh, did, did, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, every time there's a shooter, there's a waterfall of gun sales. I mean, every time there's a mass shooting and a big story, it becomes politicized and more people buy guns. And what, <laughs> what, what we're told is that this is the cost for freedom. I don't think this is the cost of freedom. This is no. the cost of blind obstinance. That's right. It's the cost of demagoguery. It's, it's the cost of greed. Well, you know, and it's a strange freedom yeah. that sends our children regularly on lockdown. Exactly. And you're well, worried about getting shot every, every day. day. But, you know, you, you know, as a pastor, as somebody who deals with these issues, it's really perverse the degree to which, for example, the meaning of Christmas has been perverted by this. Look at how many members of Congress send out Christmas cards with AR-15s, right. brandishing with guns. It's, it's like they worship the yeah, guns. so proud of themselves. The, the, it's crazy. There, there, there is, th this is a moral problem. Uh, it's also a problem with our democracy. Um, anytime you can have, have this kind of consensus in the country, that we have to do something. And, and, and there, are, there are divisions, to be sure. Mm -hmm. We don't agree on everything on the left and the right. But the fact that there's no movement suggests mm -hmm. that there's something broken in the democracy itself. And um, it's why we, we, we need voices to continue to stand up at, at the grassroots level to make noise on the outside, even as there are those of us who are trying to get something done on the inside. Well, while, while you were talking about the Fox News poll, they put it up, and I just want to read this again to a lot of people listen on the radio. Uh, 87 percent, as the senator said, 87 percent of Americans support background checks, 81 percent support enforcing existing gun laws, 81 percent want the age to go up to 21 for all gun purchases, 80 percent want mental health checks as a requirement, 80 percent support go. red flag laws, and 77 percent support a 30-day waiting period, and, Senator, even a majority of Americans support the ban of military-style weapons. So we won't get there. But what about starting with something that 9 out of 10 Americans right. want? Why can't we get at least right. universal background checks on all gun purchases? Well, it's hard to get a bill introduced if, if no one's even talking about it. And I'm telling you that over the last few weeks, uh, while we saw what happened in Tennessee and on this question around democracy, we saw it in a stark way. Mm. Those brave legislators stood up and they were literally expelled. Mm. Think about that. Expelled from the legislator. The legislature is not simply that they lost their seats. Thankfully, the, the people sent them back. But but the, the voters were disenfranchised. They were right. robbed of their voice. And so uh, this is a problem with our democracy. We have to stand up and make sure that the people can get their voice back. And uh, I can tell you there was no conversation even happening in the Congress. And uh, I began to push my colleagues on this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've had conversations with the leadership, and I'm hopeful that building on the work uh, that Chris Murphy on our side of the aisle and, and others uh, did on the other side of the aisle uh, to get you know, a, a, an important bill passed last summer that we can build on that. That bill had a lot of provisions for mental health care. And so it seems to me that universal background checks might be the next logical step. It's a contradiction to say that guns don't kill people, people kill people, but we don't want to know who those exactly. people are. We don't right. want to do a background check. Exactly. Senator Raphael Warnock, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. For coming to, to the show this morning.